full frame is better. Okay, photography 101. Today I want to talk about center sizes, or actually, more precisely, more technically, is the format. I would like to suggest that you know don't listen too much about what everybody is talking about these days. You know, I know, I know. First thing you come to your mind is that I'm a Michael Forsness user, so don't listen to all these full frame bollocks. And uh, no, I'm not suggesting that at all. And if full frame is for you, go ahead and get full frame. And uh, or so, if you medium format is something that you like to do go for it but you have to understand the relationship and whether you really do need those systems and for me and I have to tell you you know like people always think that you know I'm have been a full uh, Michael four third or four third users since the beginning uh, of my career and I have to tell you that you know I have been shooting medium format and full frame for 15 years before I move on to Michael four third and I actually said that as well you know and I still use full frame and medium format for certain type of projects depending on what I need and uh, uh, but I chose Michael Forfer simply for one reason, which I already mentioned, portability and size and weight. Well, I have to say that, you know, uh, negative size or format sizes did matter in the old days, especially during the film eras, negatives were very, very different back then. And uh, initially, if you look back in the history of photography, you'll find that uh, a lot of the photographers back in the 30s and 40s they did consider 35 millimeters were a were an inferior platform or format uh, simply because they just couldn't get the same image quality and that is well that was a fact because uh, if you look at negatives in general and uh, they they're very very different beasts compared to digital sensors simply because if you look at the sheet of negative uh, i don't have a scientific numbers in my mind but if you look at like let's consider as like a square uh, dot per square inch uh, if let's say a big negative or whatever negative size you choose they have a density of 300 dpi let's let's put it that way scientifically and uh, even though yeah it isn't uh, if you have a 10 by 8 sheet 300 dpi perfect that's good nice and sharp things like that then you cut it down into like a 120 format you're still having a 300 dpi and then you cut it even smaller to the 35 millimeters size which is today's full frame still having that 300 dpi and then uh, you actually will see that the dot once you blow up the negative so uh, that is one of the physical challenges in the old days when people were considering smaller format because they they found that the negative were much coarser uh, and very gritty lots of grains compared to larger format which you know comparatively uh, they're much finer so like you've got uh, uh, a perceived sharpness is way higher than the smaller formats. Um, digital sensors, of course, is slightly different now because they are going for very, very high resolutions. And uh, but if you, in relative terms, if you blow it up using the same density of pixels, you still get a much higher quality, much higher density, and much sharper pictures in larger format. And hence, why the uh, medium format still trumps in terms of uh, 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 resolutions and dynamic range over smaller sensor so what is the advantage of smaller format well of course first thing comes to mind will be portability uh, similarly looking back in the film era when mostly were large format big tripod big wooden box with a cloth behind you to do the exposures and uh, a 35 millimeters camera is tiny you know like you do not require a tripod to shoot and then you can actually hold it anywhere you want have a little bag with you and you know just a few rolls of film in terms of like big sheet of negative uh, so portability is definitely 
a factor and uh, it's exactly the same thing as today's photography if you're looking at like medium format digital camera compared to full frame digital camera and then you've got the APS-C and the micro four third the smaller the sensor it goes the smaller the physical size it is so you cannot deny it's part of physics so one of the major benefit of course would be portabilities and size and micro four third being this one of the smallest sensors in the entire kind of lineup will have the smallest body and the lighter system weight in general and uh, this is why if you value uh, weight and size Michael Forther is still the way to go and I do not see any sort of format full frame medium format and uh, Michael Forther being inferior to each other in temp depending on what you need um, having said that though there are of course drawbacks of each of the system similar to what I just talked about about film sizes and then uh, film grain sizes and things like that so larger format would obviously have much first of all high resolution by default and uh, and also much better low light performance in terms of grain size because once you use bump up the ISO and things like that and just like traditionally using much higher speed film even though the grains are coarser and bigger but in a larger format and then the relative uh, resolution will still be a lot higher compared to the smaller format so let's say using I uh, so ISO 800 negatives on larger format cameras then you compare that to the 35 millimeters 800 film you will find that the larger format will be a lot a lot cleaner and better compared to 35 millimeters so similar things will happen in digital sensors and then when you have a larger format yes it will be a little bit better than the smaller format there's no denying about that all right okay the bell is still ringing so this signals my last section of photography 101 so before i close out um, I have to mention about the disadvantages of smaller format or actually each of the formats so you really know larger formats and uh, the advantage of first of all medium format would definitely have much better dynamic range at low ISO range but it comes at the cost of being bulky and big and heavy uh, simply because they needed to be to accommodate the sensor size or the negative size uh, so you know if you're traveling a lot you know that will be the pain in the butt you know you have to carry them so so long uh, unless you have an assistant carrying it for you you have to bear that pain um, then of course full frame will be considerably smaller um, so you can go further with that weight of course and also benefit from much much better lower light uh, shooting you know compared to the medium format uh, but apart from that I think full frame is pretty decent it's more like an all-rounder so um, uh, Michael Forthert then again because the sensor size is a lot smaller uh, or APS-C for that matter and that would mean that you need a smaller body and the plus side will be much much smaller uh, in size and weight so you gain you gain a little bit more uh, space in your back and also lighter so you can travel even further um, but the downside of course you will lose out some of the dynamic range and also low light performances um, this is something I want to highlight to you guys so you can actually consider which format is better for you do you want to uh, have an all-rounder and uh, not so much a specialized or you, you're not a travel photographer you're not traveling a lot but you don't need uh, so much a low light situation then you go for a smaller sensor or you constantly shooting low light then of course you would need a full frame or you just want to stuck in the studio doing a lot of portraits and commercial stuff you go for a medium format so there are like plus and minuses of each of the formats and you just really have to consider all that take the boxes that you need and like I said I don't think there is a perfect format or a perfect camera for any photographer full stop you know then I don't believe in that but there is a perfect tool for the photographer to do a specific job uh, me as a professional uh, location uh, portraits documentary and travel photographer Michael Forza is the perfect platform for me because I do need the size and weight so I can go further uh, without having that penalty in my back and, uh, and I don't really see the, uh, a significant decrease in image quality if you know what you're shooting and how to use the camera and I really don't see that uh, at all and given the fact that you know Michael Forza does have a much better uh, stabilization system so you know I can actually shoot a slightly slower shutter speed without having that penalty so I can always use slightly lower ISO range compared to full frame even they even like compare the IBIS between the full frame and the Michael Forza the Michael Forza still trumps them over um, 
shallow depth of field, you know, I don't consider that as a disadvantage because people always un don't understand about uh, achieving depth of field. If you're comparing the same distance to your subjects between the lenses and, uh, you know, we're going to reserve it for another 101, but uh, you are comparing apples and oranges, so you, you really cannot do the same like that, you know, same calculation like that. If you want to achieve the similar depth of field, you can actually do that with Micro Four Thirds. You just have to adapt to it and work your distance out. Anyway, so this is my Photography 101 and hope you enjoyed that video and we will talk again next time and uh, yeah, enjoy the sun's gone now. Enjoy your day and uh, wherever you are and keep shooting and be happy. Bye now. Woo!